Hello, everyone. We are so excited that you're with us. We have Kelly Shewitt, and she is in Maryland, and she is crushing it. She is a co-owner of Next Step Realty, a destination brokerage for Maryland, and we are so excited. We're going to be talking about how to follow up, how to buy leads, what leads work, what don't work, how to follow up, follow up, and follow up again, which is actually one of our core values. So Kelly, welcome. Hi, thanks for having me. So first thing, I, I love that you, when we were talking right before we started, we were talking about follow up, follow up and follow up again. That to me is just the key to success. And so I want you to first talk about what leads that you've bought that actually have worked for your team and what hasn't worked and kind of some of those scripts that actually converted those people into actual buyers or sellers? That's great. I always love this question because everybody wants to know the million dollar question, like where can I buy a lead? Um, who has the best lead? I think what we learned early on here in Maryland, and I'm I'm kind of like in the Northern part of Baltimore. So Baltimore County, Baltimore city. Um, and this is true in a lot of cities, but I think especially in Baltimore, it's very street by street. So a lot of leads that we're buying, you can't segment that way. You know, you're segmenting by a zip code, which for us gets you basically half of Baltimore City. So um, we learned really early on that like certain leads don't work when they can't be segmented by price or by house type because an $800,000 house um, in one, one type of like historic home will be one street over from boarded up row homes that an investor might pick up. Well, that's like a very different situation, a very different type of agent that's going to follow up with both of those clients. Um, and if you don't have the right funnels to send those leads through, it's going to be challenging. I think for us over the years, and I hate to say this because it's such, you know, everybody, it's a love hate with Zillow, but over the years, our agents have always at least broken even when they have a lender partner with Zillow. Um, I would say that and realtor.com, those are the same leads, obviously. Um, they've worked. Um, beyond that, we've tried everything. So we've-, we've Hold on, I want to stay there. And yeah. I will say we have spent in the past millions, like when I say millions of dollars yeah. on Zillow. And what we have found is that we actually, what you just said is, I, I, if anyone is really honest, okay, you just said it in the most brilliant way and that's it. The only way to do it on Zillow is you, number one, have to have a lender partner. Yeah. Meaning if you spend a thousand dollars, they're spending 500, you're paying 500. And then once you figure it out, you will break even at best. You okay. might even lose a tiny bit, but at best you are going to just break even. And the way that you have to justify it is go, okay, but I'm going to follow up and follow up and follow up again. And then this particular seller hopefully will send me a referral yes. and give me another customer. Is that kind of your mindset? hundred percent. That's exactly it. And we're very strategic how we buy Zillow. We don't do flex. We never have. We only will buy a zip code if we can be in the top three position, ideally number one, and only if you're going to get at least two connections a month. Um, so we're really strategic in how we buy it also. Um, and we make all of our agents ask for Zillow reviews so that you perform a little better. Like if you're going to buy Zillow, I hate to say it, you have to play their game, right? Like so what is that game? So just give us kind of the the five things that you need to make sure that you do if you are going to buy a Zillow leads. They're not going to tell you all the tricks. It's like Google. They're not going to tell us their whole algorithm. But what we've learned is your answer rate is that's that's number one, because they want people to keep coming back to the platform. And if somebody clicks on a house and wants information and nobody's answering, not only are you going to lose it and it's going to go to a competitor who's also in those top five positions. Um, your ranking is going to go down. So they're going to optimize who they're giving the most calls to by answer rate. So making sure you have multiple people on that call so that you're, if you're in a listing meeting, like my phone rings right now and it's a Zillow lead, I'm not answering it. So who is on my team? That's key. Um, and then your follow-up, like how quickly you get that person in to see a house and how quickly you're updating your Premier app. That keeps you on Premier status. You ha you almost have to have that now to do anything on Zillow. Um, and then your reviews. 
they want to see that you have a lot of reviews and they're, they're actually looking at the quality of the reviews too. So if you think you can like buy a bunch of reviews or have a bunch of fake reviews, like they're matching it with actual houses that you've sold and they do care about that. Wow. Okay. So Zillow, we know, make sure you get a lender partner with it. Make sure that you just have that in your mindset. I'm breaking even on this at best and that's okay. I'll make up the money in the follow-up. What else is working for us? And see, like you just said, I will tell you, I have, uh, we have some agents in Florida and they've done realtor.com and in Florida, realtor.com works exceptionally well. I know that in Virginia and North Carolina, realtor.com was horrible. We didn't even, we didn't even break even at all. So what is your opinion on realtor.com? It's pretty similar to Zillow here. Zillow probably is a little better, but they're, they're pretty neck and neck. I have agents who have success on both and, um, you can build out a pretty robust realtor.com profile and get reviews on any list, like anything that you've had on realtor. And they'll send you leads if they don't have anybody buying a zip code. So you can get free leads from realtor.com. People don't realize that. Ooh. So explain again, what do you need to do to get free leads from realtor.com? You have to have a full updated profile. And this is another piece of advice. I'm sure you tell people this all the time. And I tell my agents this all the time. And then they tell me they've done it. And I check and they haven't. Fill out your profile on all of these lead sites. Like just have a full profile, 100% complete. Um, But if you have a full profile that's complete on realtor.com and a lead comes in that they don't have um, an agent partner for, they'll look at who has reviews and who has a complete profile and sell stuff in that area. And you might get a free lead. Don't like build your business off of this, but you might get a cherry here or there. Got it. So what other internet leads have you done that has worked and what hasn't worked? So um, I was telling you earlier, we tried, we did a really big campaign with Y Lobo and I have agent partners in other areas that just raved about the success for this. And we really truly believe in the product. Um, More recently, we tried something called Curator, which is really similar to it, where they basically have ISAs that they're paying for that are curating these leads and they could come from any source, but most of them are from like SEO, SEM, and they're collecting them for you, scrubbing them, and then giving you a pretty warm lead. Um, The problem here, again, we weren't able to segment it. So we were just chasing down. Also, they include rentals in it. So if that's not your market, you can't really extrapolate them. Um, And again, it's being optimized by how quickly you follow up and what type of service you give. So if you are ignoring all of the renters or ignoring low price points you don't want, you're not getting the good stuff. So that was like a little bit of a challenge for us. We hired an internal ISA for ourselves to kind of organize it and give it to the different types of agents who want a different type of business. We dumped probably 200, 250,000 into this over a nine month period and eventually realized like this is not working. It's not the best yes for us. We maybe closed two or three deals out of that. So for us, it was not a good model. Like for us, we're really good at nurturing our own people. So I either want a hot lead that's going to buy in the next 90 days, or I want to be curating my own list of, you know, people like I, we really want like people who are ready to buy or sell. So one of the things that I want you to talk about is kind of, you know, that song, how to know when to hold them and know when to fold them. And it's like me and my husband love to play poker for fun with, with friends. And we just love doing that. We have people over all the time. I got like this whole set, like love to make it. it real official. I mean, we even have an app that we downloaded to say like the time and how to up the bids and all this. So we really love playing. And sometimes when you've got too many chips in the table, you're just like, crap, I don't have a good hand right now, yeah. but I've got too much money in. And it sounds like that's what happened with you with Y Lopo. You were just like, well, maybe next month we'll get it. And maybe next month is that kind of what happened? And how do you know, okay, that's it. We're going to try this for X amount of time and we're not going to keep going with that. Yeah, that was the first one. That was my biggest lesson where we just waited too long. We kept thinking, oh, we're about to hit the tipping point. Let's invest more. Let's double down. Let's do this. And we never did. Eventually, we just pulled the plug on it. And now somebody gave me some really good advice after that. They said, you know, your tendency is to like throw a cannonball at whatever you do. Like instead, maybe just 
shoot a couple of shots and see how they land before you go all in on something. So we've taken that advice and now we measure things in, you know, six weeks, three months, six months and see how we're tracking. If we're not seeing a progression in the way that we want to, if we're not seeing closings at those different points, we're not going to let this ride for a year, 18 months like we did that first time. Wow. That is really, really good. I love that. And what I, the analogy I give people, and I say this to anyone that calls me for marketing. And I say, you know, the way that I do business is I don't jump into the pool. That is a recipe for disaster, right? right? So I'm going to first, and this is how I get into the pool. Well, number one, I, it takes a long time to blow dry my hair. So I don't want to get my hair wet. Not so hair wet. My, <laughs> yeah, it's like I put my foot in and then I put my other foot and then I get up to my knees and then I do that. And actually, like when we were doing radio ads, I would say to the girl, I said, Look, I'm going to spend a thousand dollars and see how that goes. And if I get a return, then I'll spend two thousand. And then at one point, we got all the way up to like thirty six thousand dollars a month because the return was working for us. And then radio stopped working as well, and so forth. So you have to, you also have to go. Okay, radio worked for us for a really long time. Well, then guess what? People started listening to podcasts in their cars and they started having, you know, Sirius or whatever that is, XM and all this other stuff. And then radio wasn't working. So just because it worked then, you have to constantly look at that ROI. And how often are we bullied into, hey, you know, we're talking to six other agents who are your level. And if you don't take all of this pie, there's going to be no pie left. And we're bullied into like, these huge contracts or this huge spend without them having to prove anything to us. Like I'm not doing that anymore. <laughs> you, oh my gosh. That's so show me how you work. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So let's talk about the funnel. So <clears throat> let's say we find a, a system that works for us. Let's pretend it's Zillow or another ad spend that we're doing online. We, we have KV core and uh, our agents are finding really good success with that. The leads are they're between five and fifteen dollars a lead, um, and so that is the best way I believe right now. We've tried all kinds of different things, but those KV core leads. But you gotta have a system for it. So I want you to explain what is that system. Let's pretend the online lead comes mm -hmm. in. What's the follow up? How many times are you doing it? What are you saying, and what's working? So immediately we're going to we want to answer within five minutes. We want to speak to them within five minutes. If we don't get them and our client, we all do that annoying double call. Like if they don't answer right away, we're calling right back. I'm sorry, my phone cut out. I was trying to call you and leave a message. I know you wanted to see one, two, three main street. Like when can I get you out? We want to- Hold on, let me stop right there. Cause that's a gem. That's called the double dial. Every single one of you should be calling someone if they don't answer you hang up the phone and you do a double dial every single time without question. Always, always, always do that. And when people are like, I don't want to be annoying. Well, then just get out of real estate. <laughs> and here's the thing, like they requested information about a house. Your job is to give them that information. If they're annoyed that you called giving them what they asked for, that's not on you. So what do you say? So if they say, why did you call me twice? What would you say? Oh my gosh, I drive through, I'm driving through the valley. It hung up. I wanted to call you back. I know you wanted information on 123 Main Street. When can I get you out to see it? I want to meet them at the property. And I know that that is controversial. I know a lot of agents on here are like, oh my gosh, you don't meet them at your office first. That's crazy. You don't even know if they're pre-approved. That's a waste of time. For me, I'm doing their buyer consult while I'm showing them a house. They never are going to buy that first house that they want to see. They're just not. In this market, it's probably already under contract anyway. Um, but if I can meet them somewhere, I'm doing that buyer consult while we're seeing the house. How long have you been searching? How does this compare to other things you've seen? Are you working with an agent? Why didn't they show you this today? What else is going on? Have you gone through the pre-approval process? Probably not. I can hook you up with that. I'm doing all of that while we're touring a house. It kills two birds with one stone. And ultimately, they didn't ask to set a buyer consult meeting on Zillow. They asked to see 123 Main Street. So I'm giving them what they asked for while getting what I need to make them a long-time client. I want to tell you, one of the reasons why I joined and I just love Canzel is that I can get 100% commission 
I get revenue share and I get stock. I am making thousands of dollars every single month in revenue share and stocks. And I now don't have to work nights and weekends on real estate anymore. You know, I've actually never been to a real estate agent's retirement party and I want to be the first one that people are coming to at a young age. And I want to share with you some of my favorite resources. So if you go to joincanzel.com slash free, there's a couple that I want you to download. One is a 20 free lead generating PDF. It's going to help you generate leads for free that you can download, as well as there's one on how to double your business. I don't want you to miss it. Go download it today. Join Kanzel.com slash free. Wow. That's so good. Now, do you have any specific texts? Let, let's just pretend you're getting a seller lead or a buyer lead. What is kind of the first, how many times are you reaching out in the first seven to 10 days? How, and exactly what does that look like? Well, tell us what the message is going to say. Yeah. So let's say I didn't connect with them. We didn't meet at the house. None of that happened. It just went to voicemail. I'm going to call them or text them every single day for 12 days. We find that they most of the time get back to us day seven. And at that point, they're almost apologetic. I'm, if they if they get back to us and they're not a dead lead. So sorry, I've been so busy. I did ask for information. Here's my situation. Um, my texts usually say, hey, this is Kelly. I saw you wanted more information on 123 Main Street. And then I say one of two things. These are not automated. Like I'm literally texting them. Um, it looks like that property is under contract. Here's two others that are really similar. I'd love to take you out to see either of them or anything else you want to see this weekend. Or I say, it looks like it's still available. I'd love to talk to you about some of the options with it or get you out to see it. Are you available Thursday night or Saturday? I give them like two options. Um, again, my idea, I want to get them out to see a house. I will keep following up with them until those 12 days. And then they go on to more of a drip campaign where it's email and video based. And then um, it still has prompts for me to reach out to them, but it only goes to weekly. I will continue following up with them until I find out that they're dead or they bought a house. Like forever, they will hear from me. Yeah, I, I I just love you so much. I'm telling you, like I've only met you for a short amount of time, but I'm like, man, this is my girl. We we literally said to people, you should follow up until they buy or die, and yeah. that is the truth. It's like keep following up. But I also know, like my mom always says, know thyself. She that's like her one thing like she that. always says. She always says there's a couple of things she always says. One is know thyself, but she always says move on.com. Like if, if I call her and I'm like, mom, I'm just upset about this or that. She's like, Chantel, move on.com. Come on. But anyway, with the know thyself, it's like, if you know, you're not going to follow up every day, then I'm telling you right now, you need to email. Okay. Right now, email BOD at canzel.com. We will help you get an assistant for four to five dollars an hour from you know the Philippines or some other areas, and they will follow up for you. Okay. They can act like you, they can get into your email, yeah. they will do it. If you're not going to, you have to hire someone else to do it and stop being El Cheapo. Four dollars or five dollars an hour. Like Nothing. you can split it with another agent. That's 20, yeah. split it with a friend. I'll take them for 20 hours. You take them for 20 yep. hours. Number one, stop being cheap. Number two, either do it yourself or hire someone to do it. Yeah. Or you have no business buying leads. Like you can't buy a lead, call them once and say, you know, these leads don't work. Exactly. Ugh. I just love you so much. Okay, yes. so now let's switch gears and talk about, okay, and also just let's go to like the, before we move on from that, like sometimes people are like, well, what am I going to say? Like day one, day two, day three, like after day five, what does that look like? Because it kind of is like, what, so what my, do you say then? My final like sign off message, again, I'm going to still keep following up with them. But like I always text or email, say, did you find house question mark? And then they usually write back. Like if it's a text, that's all all right. Hey, did you find a house? They're like, no, what do you mean? Oh, well, you were asking for information on this one. I've been trying to reach out to you. I figured you might've found a place. I didn't want to keep reaching out if you did. And they're like, no, we haven't. Then that starts a conversation. Same thing with email. That's like my subject line. Like, did you ever end up buying a house question mark? 
I'm like, hey, I've just reached out a couple of times, haven't heard anything. I'm assuming you probably found a place already and don't need my help. But if I'm wrong, let me know. They're like, oh, you are wrong. I still can't find anything. You guys see how personal that sounded? The, I will tell you what drives me completely batty. And I, I literally feel like I'm a broken record and I say it over and over and people still do this. They go, hello, this is Joe from Canzel Realty. And Joe, I'm I'm not calling you out. I'm saying <laughs> just Joe Blow. Um, Joe Blow from Canzel Realty. I would like just, I can't even be per, super, super professional. But anyway, I was wondering if there's any way that I could help you. I don't even know because I I don't even talk that professionally, but you know what I'm talking about. And then no one freaking responds to them. And then they're like, why didn't you? If you listen to what she just said, did you buy a house? That's it. Did you find the house you were looking for? That's it. That should be the text message, not all this other fluff. It's got to be short, sweet. And would you write that? to your best friend give us some more little little ones like that that are super short sweet that were throw in an emoji or two like these are real people like you don't have to be so professional especially on text but also in like subject lines asking questions like that always works because people if you ask a question people feel this innate need to respond and you're asking yeah just asking them something the other thing I always ask is um do have you been getting access to listings that are off market yet? And I say yet, because if they have another agent, that's not a good agent, which let's be serious. They're not getting off market listings, right? They're just getting whatever they're seeing on their portal or whatever they're finding on their own on Zillow or, you know, Redfin, whatever they're scrolling. So it implies that they should already be getting these. And it implies that you have access to them. And in this market, everybody wants access to something that nobody else has. If they say, no, what's that? Then I say, oh, well, I have access to off-market listings. I send them, my whole team has a back-end channel where I can pull anything that they're looking for. And I also pull anything that's incoming soon and bright because chances are they may or may not have seen that depending on where they're searching. And I say, well, what neighborhood are you looking at? It starts that conversation. If they say, oh, I'm looking in, um, you know, Canton. Then I say, okay, cool. I have these two. And they're like, wow, now you look like a hero. You're giving them something that nobody else has given them yet. And that's what builds that trust. That's what continues the conversation. They don't care about you. They don't even know you. They care about whatever house they can or can't find. So if you're giving them a house, they will inevitably start caring a lot more about you really fast. Yeah. And one of my, one of my good friends, he always says like, don't say just following up. He's like, just following up. Like that's terrible. But ask them and instead of saying just following up, you need to say, an actual question, like, did you yeah. find the house you wanted? Right. Question mark. That's it. it. Out or, to see Main Street last weekend. I know you were trying to. Yeah, exactly. Or were you able to get the interest rate that you wanted or whatever it is? That's what you want to say. So let's switch gears. Oh my gosh, time is running out. We only have six minutes left. So real quick, talk about the follow-up that you do. Cause like we just talked about, you get these internet leads, it's fine. You break even in on them, but now you've got to work on following up and following up with them so that when they buy their next house, they're using you. What kind of follow-up system do you have for that? So we did a lot of research and we found out that really only like 17 people reuse, 17% of people reuse their agent. So if you think about it, every listing lead is a lead that their agent ditched them or they ditched their agent, right? They bought that house with someone. So why are they calling you and not the person they they bought that house with? But it's so common because we pass the keys and we don't follow up with them. Um, So I have everybody on a long-term follow-up plan. It goes for seven years. Um, And every year they're touched by me at least 36 times. The math on that is for everybody in your SOI or everybody on that plan Um, For every 100 people that are in that, you should be getting between 17 and 22 referrals if you're touching them 36 times a year. And touching them could be anything, but for me, it's mostly a combination of postcards that go out to them, um, emails, and a newsletter. And then it's also just me texting them, sending them a CMA, um, inviting them to events that we have on our team. But I stay in front of them forever. I send them a home anniversary gift every year. Um, and how do you do that with the home and do you have a program you do that with, or do you do that? in house? It's fully automated. It is in house, but it's automated. So I don't ever touch it. 
It's handwritten card. Everything comes with my verbiage straight to their house. They post what is it that you're usually house. sending? What is it that you're sending? Um, I either send, it depends where they, there's this, a company called um, Cakes by Melissa. They send these like little mini cupcakes and you can send like gluten-free and vegan. I like them because they have lots of options mm. um, and they're cheap. Like it's $50 shipped or I send um, like urban stems or a flower, like plant type bouquet, depending on who it is. Like it depends on the client. Like I'm not going to send that to like a bachelor necessarily, like a bouquet of flowers, but the cupcakes are always a hit. Um, and yeah, and I, especially cause I'm gluten-free. So if you sent me right. a gluten-free cupcake, I'd be like, Oh, she really so cares awesome. about me. Yeah. <laughs> so there it's like, I try to keep it around $50 shipped, like closed. And I, the amount of referrals I get from that, it's just crazy. Wow. So that's awesome. And one thing I want to remind you guys, one thing that we're doing that we've got a lot of agents doing is ordering things on Amazon. You get your assistant to do it. And Amazon, you can find things on Amazon that are really cute and really cheap for $15 yeah. shipped. So that's even cheaper because yeah, right now everyone's that. trying to save money. You can find some really cute things. You get your, your admin to put the addresses in there. Once you have them in there, you can do it every year. I love Bye. that. $10 or a $15 thing on Amazon, it doesn't, it literally, it will take you 30 seconds to be able to do it exactly. because when you're doing any of this stuff on your own, it's just, you've got to really conserve your time and make sure you're, yeah. you know, these Popeyes, I'm telling you, I, I'm too high of a D on, you know, on the disc personality score, I'm off the charts D. Um, but I will tell you, I see people doing these Popeyes and it's okay. But the, if you look at the amount of time that you're spending to me doing it on Amazon, then picking up the phone and calling, if it took me a minute to order it on Amazon and then a minute to do it on the phone yeah. and a text, Hey, I sent you this. I'm taking two minutes of my time. The Popeye I'm literally going to spend at least an hour on everything. That's crazy. Crazy. And I, like, I send them a Starbucks card on their birthday with a handwritten note. And I send them a really nice gift card if they send me a referral. Mm, and I send I it after that. they send the referral, not if the referral works with me. I'm, I'm rewarding the behavior of them sending me a referral. Great. Yeah. And that that's really important. I can't tell you how many agents don't know the RESPA laws on these referrals. From from in the state of Virginia, I called the DPOR one time and I asked him and he said, if you send anything more than $25, that's kind of their gauge in the state of Virginia when I called on DPOR. He said, if you send something more than $25, we count that as a kickback and that is punishable by jail time. I'm like, yeah, I don't look at like, it. Sure my, so. Yeah. But you can get creative with it. You can send them a gift. You can send them anything. Like nobody's going to track that down and say like, why you sent them a gift or why you sent them a gift card or whatever it is. But I'm always yeah. like, Hey, thank you for trusting me with whoever appreciate you. I'm never going to like advertise that. Hey, if you send me a referral, I'm going to send you something just quietly on the side. I'm sending them a thank you. And they appreciate that. Yeah. Sometimes I did like, see a guy, I saw a guy on Facebook and he was like, if you send me a referral, I'll send you five hundred dollars. No, gang. <laughs> no, no, no. Like, uh, uh, no. Uh, uh. But thanking people is different, and I think if you're proactively doing that all the time, they just and even like if you just send them their anniversary. When I send them things or when I touch touch them in any way, I'm always saying, "Hey, I would love to take care of any of your friends and family. I'll take great care of anybody you send my way." I'm always reminding them that because people don't know how it works. They don't know how important referrals are to us. They don't. They just don't know that, that, you know, it's, it's not the same in other industries. Well, I think everyone is feeling the heat right now. And if you had to give them a couple of last minute tips, if they're just like, I am dry right now. And they say, I don't have the business I'm looking for. What would be your kind of quick tips that you'd say, like, I need like an injection of something right now. What would you tell them to do? I would say take all of those leads that you have that went nowhere, take a pool, all of your dead leads, you have your admin send you a list of everything that went nowhere and send them all an email at once, like figure out a way to do it, whatever CRM you work and just send them one. Did you end up buying a house? I'm updating my database for next year. I wanted to, you know, I wanted to find out, did you ever end up moving? That's all it is. You will get responses back and I guarantee you will at least get two sales from just doing that. 
Oh my gosh. That's so good. Did you end up moving? And um, gang, if you are listening and you are with Kanzel already, we've got a ton of leads that we can give you if you're interested in working some of those old, older leads. And like we said, the leads that are six to eight months old, those are prime. People don't want to act like it is, but they are really prime. They're going to buy a house. Like they reached out because they're going to buy a house in 12 to 18 months. It's just a matter of where they are there. I guarantee you will all get at least one or two sales if you just send that one email out to every dead lead and then clean up your database, like do something with them, put them on a drip or get rid of them or clean up your database. That way you can go into next year with a really fresh, clean, like lead base. Mm. This was so amazing, Kelly. Thank you so much. Your energy is contagious. I absolutely love talking with you. Tell listeners where they can find you and where they can follow you. So probably the best place to find me is on Instagram, sold by Kelly Shewitt. I post a lot, a lot of good content, a lot of fun stuff. I love connecting with people. So message me if you're on there. Um, I love like sending referrals different places. So let's definitely connect on there. That's the easiest place to find me. Awesome. Well, you guys stay tuned. We've got another episode coming up in just a few. Thank you for listening. If you enjoyed this episode, please subscribe, leave a rating and a review so we can get this out to more agents and tune in next week for another power packed episode. This is the millionaire real estate podcast.